simply doing his duty. So he manifests the appropriate mood toward the different people that he's relating to according to their relationship, not according to the temporary circumstances. You see? So, in other words, sometimes, for example, we chastise our disciples that, uh, why are you doing like this, this nonsense? Huh? Well, why do we do that? Are we angry? No. But because we want our devotees to advance always in spiritual life. Huh? So the, the type of behavior that was appropriate in the past is no longer appropriate because we expect them to advance. Huh? We want them to make progress. So sometimes if a father or, other, or parent has to chastise the child and sometimes has to praise and encourage the child, uh, regardless of whether he's feeling pleasure or pain, uh, regardless of the circumstances, he has a duty to teach the child how to be a, a real human being. And if the parent doesn't do this, if the parent is lax, if the parent is too indulgent, then the, uh, the result will be that the child will not grow up with the adequate preparation, uh, adequate emotional maturity, and they'll always be a problem, say, to themselves and to other people. So similarly with disciples, if, if you don't uh, cut off their bad habits right in the beginning, then they become lazy, self-indulgent, and they don't advance. So, you know, if a, if, a, if a disciple or a student learns lesson one, and then, you know, two or three months later, they're still on lesson one, well, then lesson one is not going to be enough anymore. <laughs> we have to say, no, let, do lesson two, lesson three. Come on, let's go. There's lesson, f I'm working on lesson 7,342, you know. Were well, you still on number two? Come on, hurry up. You know, so we have to do this. Otherwise, the students won't advance. They'll become complacent, self-satisfied. Similarly, sometimes Krishna is seen to manifest different moods. Uh, sometimes positive and sometimes negative. Sometimes he's very uh, formal, you know, and sometimes he's very informal. Uh, sometimes, especially with superiors, he acts very submissive. And then sometimes, you know, with the demons, he acts extremely bold, uh, like in this example that's given. Why does Krishna do all these things? Well, it's to instruct us. He's trying to show us what is the appropriate response for different situations. And uh, when we're in the company of superiors, we should be very submissive and inquire from them. And if it uh, does fall to us uh, to deliver some moral instruction, it should be done very humbly and very meekly. And Krishna demonstrated all of these activities with uh, the Pandavas because he accepted Yudhishthira as being older than him. Uh, even though Krishna, of course, is eternal, he still accepted the uh, Vedic principles of family relationships to show the proper example. And similarly, in his activities with the gopis, Krishna was very carefree and always uh, laughing and joking, making up newer and newer dances and songs. Huh? We've seen people like this. Huh? I used to you know, be a musician. And uh, there's always, when you go to a club, there's always one guy who comes up with the new dances. You know, you go to a club and you see all the, well, maybe you've never been to a club like that, but <laughs> there's always one guy who's like leading all the dancers. And he'll come in, you know, and he'll be like, you know, some new move, you know, and then everybody will start to copy it. You know, and then as soon as everybody copies him, then he'll start some other, some other new move like this, you know, and then everybody will follow that. And it just goes on like that the whole night. Because they don't know. They don't know how to dance. So Dira Lalita is 
showing them. Huh? This is Krishna's feature also. Uh, Krishna has all these different qualities and all these different aspects of personality. And uh, he manifests these. He responds to his devotees in appropriate ways to increase their love for him. Uh, just like we experience that when we just try to repeat Krishna's message that Krishna takes such good care of us through his devotees. Huh? And we experience this again and again and again, that, that when we needed challenges and when we needed uh, uh, some motivation, some impetus to learn this teaching very well, well, Krishna provided that in abundance. <laughs> then when it came time to, to put the teaching into practice after realization and teach others, then also Krishna provided excellent facility for that. And he's continuing to do this, and in the near future, I think you're going to see some astonishing uh, improvement in the uh, situation that we have for teaching. And uh, this wonderful Janmashtami festival is just a hint of that, uh, just the beginning of that kind of new era. You know, we've been off in the jungle for years now, huh? performing severe austerities of eating, eating more and more prasadam. I mean, it's really been tough. You know? We make light of it, but actually there were times when we had to really work hard, you know, and uh, do so many things. But now, by Krishna's grace, it has turned out successful. And we're about to open up a whole new chapter in India. And Krishna has positioned us just perfectly. I mean, I just like, can't believe it. Now, I couldn't do this, you know. I'm not intelligent enough to do all this. <laughs> Nobody is. But Krishna can do it. Because Krishna is in control of everyone and everything. So if he wants to set up a nice, successful situation for his devotees, then he can very easily do it. And we just have to follow along. In this case, he's manifesting his extreme mercy. What was that one called? Dhira. Whoops. Dhiro Data. Yeah, Dhiro Data. Or Dhira Prashanta. Dhira means sober. Dhira is a person who is not moved by the different temporary manifestations of nature and time. And uh, prashanta means very peaceful. Yeah. So, you know, this is kind of our mood. That we want to give this um, esoteric teaching to people. And to do that, we can't be uh, bossy or overbearing or... Uh, you know, we can't force people to take this knowledge. We have to attract them so that they take it up on their own initiative. And also, we want to attract intelligent people. We don't want to make another religion or another cult and just, you know, uh, have a whole bunch of kind of low-class followers and just kind of order them around like a big crowd, you know. Or, uh, I mean, I've seen this, and it's not very pretty. So... Uh, we don't want to go there. We want to have intelligent students and associates, really, uh, people who can actually understand this teaching and who really under understand how to apply it properly. You know, it's not enough to understand the theory, although that's a good start. Uh, we want people who know how to apply this teaching in different circumstances, who understand how it works under the hood. Uh, the different principles, the, you know, the whole transcendental ontology. We keep talking about that. And uh, what we mean by that is that people understand the theory so well that they actually see like that. They see that I'm a spirit soul, these other people are spirit souls, we're all in these different relationships with Krishna, uh, we have these different activities which are necessary for our spiritual advancement, and we perform these activities in a mood 
which is compatible with our real nature. Uh, in other words, we're not performing them. Maybe in the beginning we perform them in a mood of duty. Like, oh, I have to do this if I want to attain self-realization. But then after some time, we should reach the point where we enjoy these things for their own sake. Uh, just like we have a great time chanting. Uh, soon, just now, uh, recently, uh, we started dancing also in Kirtan. And we're going to do a lot more of that in India. Um, up until now, we haven't really had an appropriate situation. Uh, like to da if I want to teach the dances, for example, then I can't be like, you know, playing the burdanga and leading kirtan and showing the dances. I have to be, you know, free from the other duties so that I can expand into a new area. And I want to keep expanding and expanding into newer and newer areas. Like I was saying today, 